Hey, bud. Look at you when you were in here too, eh? <laughs> Some fireworks going on outside. You're not happy with that? So, we got this one in for a motor swap. Mm, surprise. But, I don't know anything about it. Well, this anyways. I think this is a 5.3. It's drive-by wire. 60E. I believe this was a big block truck. Or, the feller had a big block in it. But, he's had problems. Had a couple big blocks in it. And now he just wants a driver. Turnkey. And go. So, that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's a really nice truck though. Nice and clean. Fancy. All right. Well, step one is going to be weeding through the harness. Just see what I got. What I don't need. I think on this one I'm just going to be super, super, uber simple. Normally I take the plug off, I make my own fuse box. This fella doesn't seem to mind or care that we just reuse this fuse box. So, we're just going to do that with the shell. Kind of simplifies all the fuses for the motor anyways. So, eh. Not a big deal. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to weed through the harness, just a few things I don't need, like the rear O2s and a few things like that. And if I remember correctly, there's like one wire in here I got to feed power to, or it's some here somewhere. I got to feed power to, and then I have to, the ignition is going to be somewhere in here. I'm going to try to wire this one to run the fuel pump, see if I can get it to work through this thing. Uh, that would be nice. So one of these is the fuel pump. I gotta find a cover. I don't think I got the cover. I'll have to find it so I know what's what, but again, one of these is like your main power to feed everything, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, yeah, we'll get started from there. Interesting. Another late night and a really crappy start. So, I guess tonight my plan, uh, where are we? 10 o'clock. And you know what? Honestly, I'm not really uh, feeling like doing a lot. <laughs> I guess what I'm going to do tonight, just so I get one thing done, is I'm going to pull this motor mount off and I'm going to build uh, an adapter plate, like the motor mount for the uh, the LS to go from the LS to the regular GM mounts. So with any hope, she's gonna fit in the same place. The plan is uh, I'm gonna make a mount to run these clamshells. And uh, they're super easy to make. I mean, you can buy these, but almost every one I've done, this has worked, so. I've cut them on the plasma, but I'm just going to do this one pretty simple. I think it'll fit on the steel that I got. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's going to be mint. All right, let me get a set of those mounts off and I'll basically show you what most of these body mounts you can buy are. Okay, well, so you can pretty much buy these motor mounts, but they're honestly as simple as a 
as uh hold on here let me make sure stuff square all right it's usually about as simple as this you kind of well mind you that hole i never really use i put three bolts in i guess that could be bad so that's the ls one and then if you look at all the kits they're essentially this it's just this one sitting here, squared up. And, uh, I guess if you really wanted to, you could, uh, punch this one out. So, that's kind of the whole motor mount. Usually I'll run the three. This one shares the one. Stick two more bolts up there. You're golden. So, I don't like this. I'm going to get this centered a little better. And then, uh, I'll punch this out and I'll just show you what this looks like all together. <clears throat> Alrighty, so it's pretty much that simple for a swap plate. Uh, I don't know, I only use the three bolts. I guess that could be bad. You could always put the third one in or the fourth one in. I've never personally had a problem, so I don't know. Just if you're using the clamshells, you might find a way you can put a bolt in here. Or I think the way they're done with the kits is it's just countersunk with a flat. Me, you can do as you need. This has worked for me. So we kind of have the lineup of these ones. And then, uh, so if you're making this plate, you just gotta, this is a little bit wider. I think you can get away with a four inch. I think this is five. I can't find my tape measure. But anyways, all you gotta do is stick your one mount on, like I did, doodle all four holes. Makes it simple. Then you get this one, line it up with the bottom hole and uh, square it up. Drill the other two holes, you're golden. This usually is your R and R swap. If you had a V8 and you want to put an LS in it, usually bolts in. The only thing you'll end up probably running into is going to be the oil pan. We're going to see how this one goes. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, you're going to need a bigger metric bolt for the bottom here, and then these ones I just use a regular nut and bolt from behind. You might hit the webbing. It's kind of hit and miss. Because where it sits here, you'll kind of see there's some webbing on either side. So you kind of have to play that game. You might have to shave a bit. I don't think you got to take much. But there, you definitely will hit the webbing. Let's see here. This one goes there and there. So it's kind of close. It's probably just the head of the bolt. You just got to shave a little bit off. I'll bolt up one on here and it'll show you what I mean. Okie doke. So that pushes it forward where it needs to. Uh, but as a heads up, you're going to lose your air conditioning down low. So if that's important to you, this is probably not the way you want to go. Um, so I'm just going to bolt the other side on. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to do tonight. Uh, tomorrow's plan is to uh, get the tranny bolted up. And seeing how this is all good, I'm going to, I guess, try to slip the motor in. We don't got much to do in here. The feather already took the motor, everything all. Like, he had removed the other motor, so I'll probably just take the lines off the power steering. Fling that out of the way. Uh, the transmission lines, I think I'll just pull out because I'm not going to use those. This one has them on. Hopefully they're not broken hopefully they're usable and uh i might put up in the hoist and just cut the exhaust off blindly because well it's not going to line up with what's going on on here other than that fuel system we'll have to deal with because this will have to come on the other side this is a single because this is drive-by wire so this one is a single like it uh, needs a uh, we call it like a regulator uh, I know folks use the Corvette style fuel filter they're pretty expensive uh, if you actually go with a four-cylinder s10 they're actually like a fraction of the price and it's got the regulator built into it so um, but I'll find a part number and all that stuff I'll show that to you I ordered a fuel pump but it's uh, I didn't order the regulator because I got I didn't know the motor was this style Anyways, I'm just going to throw the other motor mount on and call her a night. 
till tomorrow. Okie doke, fresh new day. Laziness all aside. <laughs> Let's get some stuff happening here. Uh, plan today is get the motor in. And uh, yeah, I'll go from there. For now, I'm going to clean up this stuff, get everything out of the way. Uh, probably blindly, well, I'll get this thing on the hoist. And then I can blindly just chop the exhaust because they're not going to line up with anything anyways and uh, see where we go from there. Still gotta pull the tranny lines. I'll probably just sling them up over the top for now. <clears throat> Fuel line will have to get reworked. It'll probably work on this side. It just has to get flunked around to uh, the driver's side of the motor. And yeah, I don't know. Clip was done in nicely. So this is a Nova front clip. So it's a rear steer. Um, I have to take the power steering pump out yet. And so I just bobbed the exhaust crudely. I have also loosened off this tranny mount because I really don't know if it's going to be right or not. I guess we'll see. I don't have a clue at this point. Uh, but anyways, so I'm going to drop it down, clean this stuff up, and then start on getting that bolted to that. Should be enough room. Yeah. Get that bolted on there and then uh, pull out my engine stand. No, it's right there. And then we'll uh, start getting this motor in here.
Well, that is kind of a bummer. I guess I don't know much about big blocks. <laughs> the mounts uh, do not quite line up. Maybe they would if it dropped lower, but I, uh, the exhaust is hitting the steering box there. So I don't think it'd be the end of the world to raise the motor up, you know, half inch, an inch. Try to get this lined up, get a little bit of breathing clearance. There is, like, you can fit a sliver of paper through here. Wow, a little more than that. So the clearance is like, eh. <laughs> I know I did this on my wife's truck, but I guess just being that it was a Dodge or something, there's something totally different about it. Uh, the oil pan is not terrible, but I don't like it that low. So we'll raise it up an inch. Mm, if it's usable for them, good. If not, we can always cut the pan or order a pan, one or the other. But for now, I guess what I got to do is I got to unbolt these mounts. I'm going to try to shim it up. This looks a little flimsy, eh? I think I'm going to uh, make a, a gusset on there after. Because they kind of hang off. I mean, whatever. It held a big block, so must be okay. But anyways... I'm going to jack the motor up a hair a bit. I'm going to loosen all these off. I'm actually going to get the motor mount in place and where she should be. And then we can figure out... <clears throat> Bitch, I just broke that. Yep. Go me. Dang it. <laughs> Alright. So those are not important anywhere. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'm going to get started on that. As much fun as that is. Boo for the drop in. She's not a direct to bolt in. Okie doke. So I have <clears throat> pushed the motor back. So now full lock, we got a bunch of spare room between the pan and this. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but there is quite a bit. <clears throat> now I have to bring the motor up an inch. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but there's actually, I can almost fit my hand between there. I just have to take that shield. Uh, we'll have to get smooth and smothered out of the way a wee little bit, but it'll be good. The motor's sitting a little crooked, so once I do this side, this will come down. And uh, we should be close to on the money. So, they had a spacer in there already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this up. I'm going to have the mounts off the side. I'm going to build, uh, take some one by one up down the middle, and then I'm going to have a gusset on either side. And uh, basically, I'm going to burn that thing in and weld the nuts onto the back of here. So when that mount comes on, if he ever has to replace it, he can take it back off. So basically, I'll build the subframe, like the structure for this, and then I'll show it because then I can bolt this on, get the motor squared. And then I can burn that sucker in. So my mounts are bolted up now. Um, now I'm basically going to put them in the truck. So I got my one inch riser there. 
Uh, I'm gonna put these in, set the motor down, make sure it's square, front the, well, side to side, and burn these suckers in. And then if you gotta replace the mounts, they come off, because we've buzzed up the nuts onto there. And yeah, pretty simple. Anyways, I'm gonna get these in, and uh, I'll get these in, I'll buzz them in, and I'll show you what she looks like after, I guess. Okie doke. So the mounts are all burned in. I added the gusset. Uh, the cross member, well, the tranny is sitting wherever the stud was on there. Looks like it went back a little bit. Like it doesn't quite line up with any of the holes they had going on here. Uh, oops, maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, look at that stuff. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. So that lines up, which might be a good news because I think the drive shaft's going to fit and I won't have to cut it. Because it was a Turbo 400 in here originally, I just got to change the yoke on it. But that's cool. He's got a drive shaft in the box. I can steal bits from. Fuel tank I probably have to drop because I need the... to see if it has a return line in there. I don't think it does. So... We'll deal with that. Although it does look like it has a vent. If it has a vent, that could be cool because I can always put a simple vent in there yet. Anyways, I am going to get the transmission crossmember bolted in. I still have to do the torque converter bolts. Those weren't done, but uh, eh, no biggie. We'll get to it. Got to pull the starter off to get those. So got to do that. Then I'll drop her down and start figuring out what we got to do for wiring. But, uh, and see if he has some proper bolts for the, the, uh, what do you want to call it? Motor mounts. But, it's in. We got lots of clearance everywhere. So here we got nowhere, doesn't hit. That's cool. This one, you can even see the room there. That's awesome. It's kind of, yeah, we got lots of room. Original manifolds. It's a lot of winds here. A lot of winds. All we had to do was raise the motor here. And then I pushed it back as far as I can, so I have like even more room for the steering again. So I'm gonna drop this thing down and, or no, I'm gonna bolt transmission first, then I'm gonna, dad'll do some stuff in the, the engine bay, have a better look at what's going on in there. So I'm quickly trying to do the power steering swap. And I guess being the older Camaro, like the newer GM box, I'm pretty sure this is how the fitting on the line is. Like that style. And I guess being a 60s front clip, it's actually just a double flared end. So what I'm going to do is basically just cut this off, cut this off, steal this flare, stick it on this line, double flare it, and then I can smash it in, reuse the pressure line that came off the LS pump. And the other line, which is just the whatever, the non-pressure line. I'll probably just get a new piece of hose and I'm just going to loop it around onto uh, this pump. Although this might just be long enough if I take it off that pump. Anyways, I'm going to cut this, cut this, switch these two around, flare it. Hopefully there's enough meat to flare it. That's what I'm just going to check now. If my flaring tool can reach it or not. And then, uh, yeah, then that's done. <laughs> <laughs> it should be that simple.
Alrighty, so I switched out this big Turbo 400 yoke. I had one. Well, the first one I had wasn't right. And then I had a, I guess, a spicer unit. <laughs> but anyways, the original U-joints and it had the inner clips, so yada yada, it all worked. The other one I had, I would have needed a conversion joint, so this will work. I, it's kind of close, so I'm just going to put it in the truck and uh, set it on the ground because when it's in, it's, it's pretty tight. I'm hoping it comes out when there's weight on the truck. I didn't look. Otherwise, I'm going to have to shorten this. But we'll, uh, we'll put it in and then we'll know. Oh, and you were watching me use something there. I usually just use a ball joint press. That's how I kind of do my U-joint. It uh, works pretty good for most. Because you got the one side that's open, so when you stick it over, you can pop your cap through. And then the same to put back in. So I don't know. Works pretty good for what I need. All right, let's see if this fits. Well, the drive shaft is perfect. That is such a change. Actually doing a swap and not having to cut a drive shaft. That is great. Everything's actually fitting pretty good in here. Uh, there's going to be some issues with the lower water neck because this one goes here and it's like way down there. We'll figure that out. You actually could run a mechanical fan, which is actually super cool. Uh, power steering is in. I have to make some brackets for the PCM and then this doodad and then figure out how to wire it properly. But there's so much room under here that this is probably going to get mounted up in the front low. This one will probably get like a nice mount right here. I'll just have to find a cover for that. Uh, the radiator, this is working okay. But just because of the fan and the uh, uh, where I got to try routing like the air filter, I might take the snout off and I'm going to stick it over here. And then I got to weld on uh, what they call a steam port. So this thing. And for some reason there's some aluminum line here, so that's cool. So I'm just going to weld this into the red. Being that it's aluminum red, that is great. And then, well, once that's in... I have to get some nubs for the transmission because I broke the cooler lines. So um, I can make these fittings, but they seem to always leak. So I'm just going to get some thread in fittings that I can just uh, put some barbed edges on. So I'm going to get that for the transmission. And yeah, the battery box is in. Yeah, we're pretty close. This tack module, I'll have to figure out where it's going. And then I got to hook up the the gas pedal. So yeah, I don't know, overall, this is going really well. I'm pretty happy with it. Lots of room, a little tight in a few places, but I don't have to figure out the fuel system yet. The exhaust, the one manifold worked perfect, or the, uh, you know, the dump with the O2 on it. This side's a little close. I did a V cut, I'm gonna have to do a little more just to pull it away from the frame. And then we'll be able to scab into the original exhaust that he had on here, wherever that is, right there. So, yeah, I don't know. Should be good. Cleaned up some of the wiring. We got to figure out where he has his gauges, because there's a few. Was it been like the temp sender and stuff like that? I think he had an electric speedo, because that's what this looks like. So that won't be too bad. That'll tie into the PCM or whatever's in this plug. I'll figure that out. Anyways, I think this was as far as we're going to get tonight. Uh, yeah, till tomorrow. Okie doke. So, we are going for round two. Or whatever. <laughs> Do something. I'm going to sawzall this spout off. Hole saw that sucker in. Buzz it in quick. I have made... This is going to be my little steam port, so I'll figure out where I want to put it after. Just simple, got to drill a hole, burn it in, no big deal. 
maybe over there, here, who knows. And uh, then I can install the rad permanently and done. So, I've been struggling here. This aluminum, I guess, has got some super contaminants or something in it. So I've kind of cleaned everything off. I'm starting from scratch, and hopefully it works. <laughs> it's turning into a bigger project than it should have been. So anyway, I'm gonna cut a new plate. I'm just gonna go over this. My uh, filler did not work, so uh, I'm just gonna shave this down a little more and plate it, buzz her up, get the filler on this side. Maybe I'll start with the filler, just for a win. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's what you're watching me struggle with there. Alright, so pressure tested, it's good. So after much frustration, turns out I think somebody used my wire brush to, uh, my stainless brush, to do something that wasn't aluminum. 
and contaminated it. So every time I tried cleaning it, I was contaminating my uh, aluminum. I mean, they're still not pretty welds, don't get me wrong. But I was having a lot of problems with some impurities and stuff in there. Uh, I happened to have a spare brush, so I tried it, and then it was like a night and day difference. So, mental note, if you're welding aluminum. Although, I'm pretty sure you don't need a, a note on that. You'd know better than I do. <laughs> Anyways, this is done. I'm going to slam her into the truck and uh, start fitting some hoses and stuff. So here's the other dilemma I usually have with these, is the outlets are normally pointing out this way, but because of the older style cars and rads, you got to point them down. So, I've done this multiple ways. Uh, for my own stuff, let me grab a bolt. <clears throat> I've done this and not had any problems, where I've literally just, like this one, I took this tab off. I don't really need to, but I took it off because it was hitting just my hose clamp and I don't know what this is for, so. But anyways, what I've done in the past is literally I've gotten a washer and I've just bolted this thing down, as you see, off to the side, because it's got a rubber gasket in there and I've never had a problem with that. It's worked fine. But being this is somebody else's, I'm gonna just build it up with some weld and then re-drill these holes I can't go really much more down because then you start running into problems with this trying to bolt. So this thing would be better if it was pointing straight down, but meh, we're gonna do with what we got here. Uh, I'm just gonna build this up with some weld, like I said, and then re-drill two holes. So this thing sits nice, because these are a little bit taller. So the nut's a little too long right now. So anyways, this should just work. Let's fill it with some weld and uh, drill it. So I'll just show you the finished product. I did take everything apart in here just so I don't cook it. So that's all sitting here. Okay, so I've basically made my new tabs and mounts and uh, buzzed them in. Just gotta put the O-ring back on and uh, bolt the sucker in. It's new angle is going to be semi pointing down, so it's as close as I can get and still be able to get a bolt in there, so yeah. Red is in now. Upper lower hose. We have the steam line that is in. It's all bolted up nice. Yeah. So even the fan fits. I'll have to build a shroud, I guess, but for now. He does have the electric fan, but I might not need it now. Maybe he doesn't want that. I don't know. Uh I'll need some elbows to do this. I need some fittings for the fuel line yet. I gotta figure out the wiring on this bit. I'm pretty sure this will work fine. The only problem is the transmission controls and a few things there, they don't work with this. 
So I'll have to piggyback out of this thing. Figure a way to pin into one of the fuses on here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can grab a mount off of one of the vehicles here so I can pin this thing up nicely and get a PCM mount. Seeing how there's a lot of room in here. Try to mount those two in here properly. And uh, I have to get some fittings for the transmission yet. So I might do that. So I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. I have to get some parts tomorrow, so uh, kind of at a standstill at this point. But anyways, as always, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.